Hello world and welcome to another episode of Uber. In today's episode we are going to talk about Amplify and App Sync. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't know anymore. <laughs> many days a week. So let's get started! So I think this was one of the most requested feature services I have to speak about. AppSync. 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 You ask it since the moment I made my first series like year and a half, two years, I don't know, it's been so long ago, basically when the service launched. I love that service since day one, I think it has so much potential, it's a GraphQL service. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave you the card so you can get and check it out. But today I want to start a new series, going in more depth in AppSync and explaining more features. But for doing that, I realized that now with time, Amplify, that is a set of libraries for the client, has become very popular and very good and it's integrated so nicely with AppSync that I cannot do a video on AppSync and not talk about Amplify. So today is the beginning of a very long series. You ask for it, you are getting it. I think there will be like 10 videos, 9 videos on this series. I have not completed yet recording and preparing for all the videos, so this is the first video. And in this video we are just going to talk a little bit about AppSync, Amplify, just very detailed, very uh, high level because I already talked a lot about it in previous videos and why they are so good together. And then we are going to start working with Amplify, just creating an initial application, setting up, getting everything ready for the next episode, we are going to start working with AppSync and Amplify. So this is a very introductory video, as always I like to do in my series, a first uh, look at the services and why we are doing this. So let's go to the slides and check it out. So let's start by talking about Amplify, what it is. The Amplify framework is an open source client framework that includes libraries, a CL, CLI toolchain and UI components. The CLI toolchain enables easy integration with AWS services just like Cognito, AppSync, Pinpoint, Recognition and many, many others. It also provides different developer tools for building, testing, deploying and hosting the entire app, the front-end and the back-end. We will see all the aspects that I just mentioned during this series of videos. This library is available for the most popular front-end frameworks and platforms like React, React Native, Angular, Ionic, Vue, iOS, plain JavaScript, <laughs> Android, whatever you imagine they have uh, support for. The integration is made for the AWS services, but Amplify is an open source project, so they are designed to be multi-cloud and they are accepting PRs, so if you want to uh, have support for other cloud providers, just make a PR and they will happily look at it. So let's look a bit more into the Amplify framework. As I said, it's an open source framework. It's one of the five top uh, growing projects in GitHub, so it's growing quite fast in the last times, last months. It's an opinionated framework, that means that it comes with a lot of defaults, and usually those defaults come with the best practices embedded from different people and experts that have been building uh, cloud applications and native uh, clients, like native cloud clients, so you don't need to do decisions or really understand a lot of what is going on in the backend. However, everything is built using infrastructure as code, they're using cloud formation for creating everything. So if you want to exit Amplify, you're not trapped into it, you can just take your cloud formation templates and deploy them wherever you want to. It has a category-based high-level abstractions, and these are all the categories that are available 
right now in the Amplify framework, we have basic things like API. So it has the support for REST with API Gateway and GraphQL with AppSync. It has the authorization that it supports with Cognito and it also comes with a UI components for uh, creating an account, signing in, signing out and everything like that. It has interactions, conversational bots and things like that. Then it has predictions, the machine learning capacity capabilities. It has a notification, push notification, storage using a stream, uh, augmented reality like Sumerian and things like that. Analytics, you can use Kinesis. Actually, I have done a video using Kinesis with Amplify, so you can go and check it out. Um, PubSub, uh, there's so many different categories that you could build a whole application with it. And you will see that I will be using a lot of these during the whole series, so it's, it's going to be pretty fun. Then we have the Amplify CLI, and this is a really nice tool that will help us to create the project that we are going to do that uh, after this slide. Then we can add features like Amplify, add a new category. We can test uh, our features locally. We can push some changes to the cloud. Everything that is built needs to be pushed in order to exist in the cloud. And then we can update the categories if we want to add new things or, I don't know, remove some stuff so we can configure it again, it's no problem. Then we also have the Amplify libraries. We have libraries, for example, uh, the API library that will help us to perform operations in the API gateways or in the GraphQL endpoints. You will see those in the following videos. They are super easy, but you can call these APIs with no need to use any weird JavaScript library. You can use them. Uh, existing Amplify library for doing that and all the authentication and the handling of the connections is done by Amplify. Also we have different uh, ways to um, add authentication to our application and you will see how easy it is to add the decorators and the UI components that come into the application. But that's a quick introduction to Amplify. I don't want to get into the details. You can always go to the documentation. Uh, in this video, I want also to focus on why I'm choosing Amplify to talk about AppSync, because this should be a series on AppSync and I'm starting with Amplify. But I think uh, I already have talked about AppSync in a previous video, the one that make you all want to know more about it. So I will not go into the details of AppSync. You can go and check that video. It's in the description box. But I think Amplify and AppSync are a great match. And I've been waiting a while to do this video because I was uh, waiting for Amplify to be a little bit more mature in order to create this. Uh, I think uh, in my previous video, I was talking about serverless framework and building uh, the app sync with, with that using the plugin from serverless framework. You can also use CloudFormation for building your app sync API. It has support for that. And that's a way to build it as infrastructure as code. But I think the integration that Amplify and AppSync is great. It simplifies your life as a developer. So that's the main reason why I want to use them together. And also the client is the main user of the GraphQL endpoint. So it's nice to create the AppSync inside a client. So it helps you to use it and try everything out. The most important reason for me to use Amplify and AppSync together is all the automation that Amplify brings to AppSync. Basically, by typing in your project Amplify add API, it will create your AppSync API. It will add the security if you want with Cognito user pools. It will handle all the basics extremely fast and easy. And you will see how easy it is to get started using this. You don't need to define any, any CloudFormation templates. Everything works extremely easy with this. And the most important, like my favorite feature, and I think the most powerful feature that Amplify has to work with AppSync is the GraphQL transform or directives, or I don't know, they have many names. And this, it's a simple way to abstract different things in your uh, GraphQL schema. So you don't need to write a lot of the schema and it creates the backend for you. So for example, in here, we can see that we have the three different types. This looks like a GraphQL schema. 
and but there is some weird annotations and those weird annotations are part of the uh, graphql transform that amplify brings so at modo it's a kind of directive that will tell uh, AppSync, uh, Amplify when it's creating the AppSync that it needs to create all the operations uh, for querying and listing and creating and things like that, this type. Also, it will create the DynamoDB table for hosting the data. And then we have the connections that what it do, it will connect to different types together and there is many many different transformations and I will show them during this whole series of videos but let's go to a quick example so you end up with a more clear idea how powerful this is so we have this simple type that is post basically a post that has a content a title and things like that and we have the add model so this is what we write in our GraphQL schema we don't add any operations, we don't add anything. So if in a GraphQL schema, if you don't have any operations, basically nobody can access that type. There is nothing you can do. But when you add the model and uh, you update your Amplify and it will create the app sync, it will create all the mutations and queries that you need to create, read, update, delete, and list that post. So all the operations will be created in your GraphQL schema also, the DynamoDB table to support those posts will be created and all the resolvers that AppSync uh, needs to communicate to Dynamo will be created. Everything out of the box. Then, if we add another directive called add auth and we put some rules, in this case a rule that only allows the owner, that will hook up with the cognito um, that you might have securing your application and will only let the owners of this post, the one that create this post, to see, uh, read, uh, update, delete, and list this post. So basically, if we are all working in the same application, I will only see my posts and be able to work on them, and you will only see your posts and you will be able to do work with them. And here we can do things like more specific, that I can update them and you can see them, or we can separate with groups and there is quite a lot of power that we can add in these rules and that's only by adding that rule then we can also add the uh, directive that says searchable and that will create us in our backend an elastic search index and a lambda that will update our dynamo table with that e to that index and also it will create the operation to be able to search the post so then we can do all kind of interesting search in that index and find our post in a dynamic way. So all this happens automatically when we add these directives. That's the only thing we need to write. The rest is magic. And that's what I love about the integration between AppSync and Amplify. I think this is extremely powerful. It makes your life so much easier. You don't need to go and configure things. It just works. So let's go and create an empty project. So I will start, and this is not something that will happen a lot from the beginning. So I will go to the Amplify documentation and I will create JavaScript because we are working with JavaScript and then I will go to React. And then I will go get started and start a tutorial. In order to have Amplify in your computer, you need to have these prerequisites, Node, NPM, Git, an AWS account, install the Amplify in your computer, follow these instructions, configure your AWS account if you have not done it in your computer, and then you're ready to move on. So this is an important step. The next step is that we are going to create an empty React app to uh, host our application. So I will do mpx create react app and I will put a name. So we are going to build an image library. So I will put image library with Amplify and AppSync. A very long name, but I have millions of projects and this makes my life easier. So this takes a moment, it builds our application and it's basically a starter app for React. There is really nothing in here. So, so now we do CD and image library and we are here to do npm start and we can see our nice basic application Ta -da! so then we can follow the uh the setup and we do amplify in it and that will configure amplify in our uh, application amplify 
in it. And here it will ask us for a name for the project and some other important information. So what is the name? Image library amplify, blah, blah, blah. Uh, environment that we will choose dev. Then our studio, Visual Studio Code is our editor, JavaScript, React, and then I click enter through everything. I have an AWS profile. I will use my Amplify project profile and then it will start initializing the project in the cloud. If we go to cloud formation, we can see that uh, happening, but I will just assume that you know how to go to cloud formation and I will skip forward until this is done. Now, when this is done, we need to install the Amplify uh, libraries. So I will get those again from the documentation npm install AWS Amplify and the UI React components and again I will fall forward this until it's done. So now it's done we can open this in Visual Studio Code and we can check out what happened and we have our basic application and you can see here I have an Amplify folder that has some information it has some configuration for our different environment and our project configuration. It has the backend and here it has the backend configuration and you will start seeing the categories appearing in this folder. And then we have our source, we have our app.js that is the main entrance for our application. So there we will add one last thing from the documentation that is importing the libraries. And we just put that in our application and this is where I will stop this video. That is the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. All those thumbs ups help me a lot. So please, if you like these videos, do give the thumbs up. That makes the YouTube algorithm find my videos easier because people like it and they want to share it. So please, 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 please. And in the next year, in the next week, we are going to talk about app sync. We are starting on, uh, to add authentication and, and doing more things with this. So stay tuned for it. Um, I hope you like the series. And if you want to see something in particular on this series, now is the time to start asking for things because that series is not ready yet. So I can add things that I have not thought about it. So do put them in the comment box below. And um, that's it. I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.